Hi there folks, in today's demonstration I come live from within a Canvas app. I've built an example of rock, paper, scissors and the reason I've done that is I wanted to explain to you what multimodal is when it comes to language models. Not only that, I'm going to demonstrate how that feature has now come to the Power Platform in the form of AI Builder and we can actually build out a prompt that can identify the object in the image, in this case my fist which is a rock and we can turn unstructured data, images, text, etc., into structured data and build out complex requirements like this simple game of rock, paper, scissors. So I first showcased multimodal back in May. It came to GPT-40 and it was available on Azure and you could deploy your own model. And I've got a video which I'll share in the description, but right now it's hit preview and it's come to the low code platform in the form of AI builder prompts. Now, if I jump across onto prompts, this is available from Power Automate or Power Apps. And you'll see over on the left-hand side, you have the AI prompt section. If you can't see that, make sure you go across to more, and then you can go and pin AI prompts. But it's here through AI Builder, you can build out a prompt and use GPT. Now, if you've used ChatGPT or Copilot where you've asked it questions, here it's all about creating a prompt and instructions based on your requirements. And my requirements focus around the game of rock, paper, scissors. I'm going to pass in an image, and when that image is assessed, it's going to look for a hand gesture or text. And then the outcome will be that it will provide me the shape in the form of rock, paper, scissors. It will provide me text, which is any text visible in the image, and it will provide me with some reasoning. You'll also see that I provided the image as an input. Over on the right hand side, I have that image input. And if I wanted to add any other content dynamically, you'll see that I can add in further text or I can use this preview feature, which allows me to pass in an image or document. Now, the really exciting thing about this new feature being multimodal, i.e. it can handle text and image or documents, is that if you have a document that you're passing across into this language model, you no longer have to perform OCR before that document is processed by GPT. So this greatly reduces the complexity of your automations when looking to analyze a piece of text or an image. Now, in my earlier demo in May, I used receipts as an example. I was able to extract common entities, including invoice dates and values and line items. That involved deploying your own model to Azure. But now we have the ability of choosing the preset models in the form of GPT-40 or GPT-40 Mini, which is the default version, which doesn't allow you to process images or documents. So when it comes to the output of the model, we can choose to either output text or we can produce structured JSON. Now I've produced a sample structured JSON here so that I get three values back in the form of this object. This is a record. It's going to have a shape, a text, and a reasoning key and then there'll be various values returned based on the outcome of the model. If I didn't have this shape and I wasn't returning structured, then I'd receive a piece of text back. And that would be a text summary of all three of these outcomes, which is not very useful if I want to pass that on to the different controls within my Power App. Hence why I'm using this custom format to enable structured data using JSON. So if I jump back up to the input, I can actually upload a sample image and there's one of me showing the V shape in the form of a pair of scissors. And I can test this prompt from within this interface and see what the sample output might be. And here we can see it's determined the shape of scissors. There must be some text in there with my name. And the reasoning is because I'm showing two fingers in the form of a V which represents scissors. Hi folks, sorry to interrupt this video. If you're enjoying the content and you haven't already, make sure you like and subscribe. And if you can, leave me a wee message below because I'd love to hear what you've learned. Cheers, back to the video. So jumping back across onto my Power App, if I was to hold up a piece of paper with the word paper on it, the model will extract the word paper and be able to determine the outcome. Again, the CPU has beaten me. If I go with scissors, again, no surprises here. It will detect the word scissors and I've ended up in a draw. If I now carefully balance my elbow and my mouse and dictate a pair of scissors with my fingers and hold up a piece of paper, when I click on that, I should hopefully get the outcome of the rock because the text takes priority over the gesture in the image. So my language model prompt has followed my instructions as expected and I've ended up with another draw with our CPU. So if we jump into how this app was built, 
There are several labels on the screen here for the user and the CPU. I have the image that I've captured, which is from our live camera control. I also have a variable image based on a switch in which I'm setting a variable to the string that comes back from our prompt. I've got some logic here, which determines the outcome of the user versus the CPU. I actually wrote this using Copilot. You'll see that I have comments written along the top here. Using Copilot, if it's enabled, you can describe what you're looking to do. So again, I can say compare CPU versus global variable with logic for rock, paper, scissors. And when I do so, Copilot will actually generate me some logic. It might not be the most efficient way of doing it, but it will give you a starting point if you're unsure what to do when writing expressions. For the camera control itself, this is pretty much where all the logic sits. I have a variable for the CPU choice, for the user choice, which I set to either an empty string or an empty record. I have an outcome which involves calling our model, which I've called rock, paper, scissors and I pass in the image from the image control. That enables me to run the GPT model with the image as an input parameter, because remember I've defined an input parameter that expects an image for that particular prompt. I then have a variable that I'm using to set the choice. And this is where things are a bit interesting in that what should come back is a structured output from the GPT call. But during testing, I discovered that I'm getting different structured outputs, and I believe this to be a bug. So for the moment, I've handled this by checking to see if the structured output property exists. If it's blank or there's an error, then you have to do a parse JSON on the text property that comes back. If the structured output does come back, then you can access those output properties that I've defined in the JSON via their names, so the shape, the text, and the reasoning. If we jump back across onto the AI prompt and look at the output, this matches with the structure that I've defined here with the shape, the text, and the reasoning. And if I was to add in any other keys, then I'd be able to access them using the structured output. We can demonstrate the output by going into the advanced tools and opening the monitor. And it's here we can see everything that happens under the bonnet of the app when we click on our various buttons, and we'll be able to have a look at the output of calling our prompt. The last piece here is just to set the CPU choice. It's based on a random number between one and three. Obviously, if it's one, it's rock. If it's two, it's paper. If it's three, it's scissors. It seemed like a pretty quick way of giving the CPU a choice between those three options. So it is completely random, albeit I seem to get beaten quite often. The final piece here is just a little summary. I wanted to demonstrate the shape, the text, and the reasoning that comes back from the language model. So we can see again, we've got rock and the text of rock, and then the reasoning that the model gives us back. If I strike a pose once more and take a picture, I would actually expect that to determine paper, which it has. It's also picked out the text from my t-shirt, which was part of the prompt, and it's given us the reasoning. The gesture is an open flat hand, which corresponds to paper. If I jump across onto our monitor tool, we can pop open the pane on the, on the right hand side. We can have a look at the response. And if we pop open the body, we can see we have the text with the shape, the text and the reasoning. And you'll have noted when I had that logic for determining the data that came back, I was actually using parse JSON on this text, which is a table or an array. So you need to get the first object that comes back. So using parse JSON, you're then able to get the untyped objects, which is the shape, the text, and the reasoning. But the interesting thing at the moment is, and this is possibly the bug, if I jump back into my app and take another picture, it's correctly determined scissors. I've won this time, thankfully. And if we jump across onto the monitor and have a look again, it's returned the text. I'll keep going and see if I can get the other version back to demonstrate. So after several attempts to get this to behave or misbehave, I was able to then, if you watch the right hand side, where I have that text output, if I look at another run, you can see we have the structured output. The advantage of the structured output, and I hope this becomes a permanent feature, is that it's not untyped, it's recognized already in your Power App, so you don't need to use parse JSON and you don't have to determine the data type, it makes life a lot easier and you can reference these values via the structured output dot shape or dot text or dot reasoning. 
but there are occasions when that structured output is missing from the response. And therefore, when we jump back across into my Canvas app, you'll hopefully now be, under, be able to understand why I have this logic. If that structured output is empty or it's blank, then you have to determine those keys and values, that record structure manually by using the parse JSON based on that text that comes back. If it's not blank, then you have the luxury of just calling out those properties dynamically. And if I show you one of the examples here, I can remove the string, I can use the dot notation, I can get the structured output, and I can get the text, which is bringing back those keys that are part of the structure I have determined in my prompt in AI prompts. So like I mentioned earlier, I have done a video on this in the form of GPT-4.0, showing you how you can actually fire up your own instance and upload receipts using the Azure GPT-4.0. But the great thing about this is you do not need to be worrying about deploying these services in Azure, which is what I covered in my previous video. So this new version in the low code space makes life an awful lot easier. I have attempted where possible when building this app to use best practices. I've labeled all my controls. I'm not very creative when it comes to the appearance of my apps, I must admit. So user experience is something I need to go and work on. But hopefully you understand the logistics of how this all comes together, how it functionally works using AI prompts in the low code space. And because this is very much a preview feature, I'm going to make this available for free via a download link in my video description. So make sure if you want to check this out, I've included the prompt and the app for you to get up and running and try this out. As I try and beat this CPU in a game of rock, paper, scissors, another draw. Let's go again with the paper. This CPU is definitely playing games and getting better of me. Maybe you could introduce a scorecard so that you know how many games you've lost versus how many you've won. I'd love to see how you adapt this and what ideas it's inspired. So do let me know in the comments below. And then if we just go and take a quick look at the Power Platform Licensing Guide, it comes out once a month. There is a section on AI Builder and here you can find out about how it's licensed. But ultimately, you buy capacity. That gives you a number of credits. So you can see one capacity pack gives you a million credits and that costs approximately $500 per month, depending on how many capacity packs you're buying. But ultimately you need to know how many credits each of these services in AI Builder is going to consume. AI prompts consume six credits for a thousand tokens. And if you're now thinking, how many tokens am I consuming for all of this? If I jump back over onto Power Automate rather than Power Apps, there is actually an AI Builder Activity tab, which is in preview, but you can see here the amount of testing I've been doing today on my rock, paper, scissors, and the number of AI credits that I've been consuming as a result. So each time I've been running that model, it's been costing me approximately 40 credits. And remember, you get 1 million credits for $500 if you buy that one pack. So off the back of today's session, you've learned about the game of rock, paper, scissors, how it works in the form of multimodal. So we can process both images and text using the low code power platform. And just one more thing before I leave, I wanted to give a shout out to four people that are helping me with my channel. I have a very basic membership and whilst it's $2.99 per month, you get your name and lights and I'll give a little shout out. So thank you very much to once again, Tim, but also Ron, Christian and Lynn that have joined my membership in the last couple of weeks. It's very much appreciated and I hope we can grow that membership and value over time.